Hey, what's up? This is Tyson McGuffin. I'm officially on Cameo. The holidays are coming up. If you guys want to, want me to put together a uh, fun little shout out for maybe a uh, friend or a family member, let me know. Check out the link below. Happy holidays. What's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. Welcome to the McGuffin Show. <clears throat> we are on episode eight here. Um, Want to uh, thank all the viewers for, for tuning in uh, each week. We're getting lots of good feedback. Uh, if you guys have any questions pertaining to the podcast, um, you can either send me a DM uh, on Instagram or a DM on Facebook and uh, ask me anything you want or if you guys want anything new talked about on the, on the podcast, uh, we can obviously do that. Uh, know that, you know, we're always, um, you know, looking to uh, talk about tournament results, uh, anything teaching related, um, you know, family stuff, uh, sports, uh, you know, kind of anything like that. So, uh, if there's any uh, uh, hot topic that you're uh, wanting to be more educated about uh, pertaining to pickleball, please let us know. I um, want to thank all of our sponsors this week. I uh, want to thank you guys for all your continued support. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive right in here. Um, so, uh, yeah, just spent a couple weeks in Punta Gorda, Florida. Um, ended up teaching three two-day camps. Uh, first camp, we just had eight. The uh, last two two-day camps, we had 16 for both. So uh, Kyle McKenzie and I tackled those babies. Uh, Kyle will not be on the episode today, uh, but he will be on episode nine. And hopefully after that, we will make him uh, uh, that much more consistent and get him on here every week. But uh, um, anyhow, so yeah, good, good two weeks in Punta Gorda. Uh, it's kind of some crummy weather, you know, leaving Coeur d'Alene. I was hoping for some sunshine. We got a little bit of sunshine, but I'm not going to lie. Um, uh, it was pretty cold during the tournament. It was pretty cold uh, the week after the tournament. Um, yeah, it was like you know, waking up in the 40s. Uh, I was blowing 20, 30 miles an hour. Um, you know, playing, playing conditions. It was it was not great. Ball's pretty cold. Ball's moving pretty fast. Um you know, and, and down there in, in Florida, it's not true wind, you know, it's kind of blowing every way and, and uh, tough to get a really good read or tough to get a really good sense on what way the wind's going and, and trying to adjust your game to that. But uh, um, I always tell people, if you can freaking win in Florida, you are one tough individual because it takes a select skill set to be able to produce a, produce a level that, uh, uh, that is good enough to be winning tournaments in Florida. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think Simone, Ben, or just anybody who trains in Florida, you're at a huge advantage. Um, and obviously you're at a huge advantage when it comes to the U S open. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough tournament to win. And, and, um, uh, you know, I was, I've been fortunate, uh, fortunate enough to win the U S open, uh, back in 2018 or sorry, back in 2000. Yeah. Back in 2018, back in 2019 or sorry, in 2018 and 2019. Um, so, uh, yeah, had some had some good results down there, but uh, both years that I won, uh, I was I was in Naples a week early, got myself super comfortable, got lots of reps in. Uh, I think two years ago I had Frank Anthony for a couple of days, so played a bunch of cat and mouse and got myself extra grooved, and uh, that's that's when I played Ben in the finals and. Uh, ben had just switched to his Franklin paddle, wasn't as comfortable with his Franklin paddle. I had been in Naples, uh, 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 living and dying in that heat for a week, getting geared up for singles. And uh, just, so, just so happened that uh, I believe that was the last time that I beat Ben. Gosh, gosh, it's been a while. 
Um, but uh, anyhow, a great two weeks. Stayed with Sue and Mac. Sue and Mac's my pickleball grandparents. Uh, they actually came to our wedding last year. Uh, they've been uh, true fans since day one. So uh, a big shout out to Sue and Mac. Love, love Sue and Mac and love their little dog, Gracie. I call her Gracie Goo. But uh, Gracie Goo was, uh, she was like a guard dog to Banks. It was kind of cute. Uh, Banks was on the ground with her, you know, little little blanket. And uh, um, uh, kind of all day long, Gracie would uh, would just kind of roam around Banks's blanket and be her little guard dog and uh, uh, guard off any guard off any bad guys but um anyhow always love staying with sue and mac they they have a little two-person hot tub out in their backyard so you know you know me you know i'd like to get that uh that, that morning dip in that afternoon dip and sometimes even an evening dip i would say i usually don't go more than three dips a day though um but uh let's 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 see here what else is going on um my uh seahawks just completely I won't, I won't, uh, I won't use my foul mouth, but let's just say, uh, I'm looking forward to next year and Russell Wilson. Um, uh, I don't know what to tell you, buddy, but, uh, broke my heart, man. Freaking broke my heart. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, anyhow, uh, they ended up losing to the Rams, the crummy loss. The uh, Seahawks played like crap. Russell didn't play well. And uh, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't, wasn't a good deal. Um, been home since Friday, uh, and uh, went went right back to work. Uh, you know, we just just built our home gym. We just got uh, TRX bands set up in our home gym. We just got a big old rope too. Um, so been uh, yeah, been the last last week. Been doing yoga every morning, uh, and then getting some functional training in after. Trying to stay out there for about three hours, and um, you know. Uh, do it the right way and, and grind it out for three hours and then head to the pickle courts, you know, get some, get some pickle in, get some recovery in after and, and then get my day started. But uh, anyhow, no, it's been good. It's been good. It's been good. Um, getting some good workouts in and getting some good sessions in, uh, in the mornings with, uh, you know, Kyle and uh, Matt Goble and Leia and Rafa and the whole, the whole gang. So it's nice to, nice to have some people to, to kind of filter through. Uh, so camp corner, um, obviously ran two or ran, sorry, three, uh, uh, three, two day camps there in Puna Gorda. It was all good. Um, uh, our next camp coming up is, uh, partnered in with PPA. So if you guys are playing the PPA tournament, um, sorry, playing the PPA tournament in Phoenix, it's at a new location. It's not in Mesa anymore. It's at the JW Marriott there in Phoenix. Uh, if you guys are playing that tournament on that Monday, Tuesday, after, uh, after we are running a level specific two day camp, you guys can sign up for one day you can sign up for both days. Um, uh, if you want to, uh, sign up as a couple, maybe, maybe your hubby, uh, takes the first day. The first day is building a soft game. Maybe you want to work on weapons or maybe, maybe you want to work on your offense. So day two is building weapons. Um, we are different, uh, differentiating ourselves from, um, from other camp companies and kind of going the route of the very first day. Uh, it's a six hour session, but it's all about, uh, you know, it's all about playing soft. So we, we introduce, um, you know, introduce uh, dinking at the line, dinking cross court, third ball drops, fifth ball drops, how to be, how to be efficient with your scrambling in the, in the transition zone. Um, you know, uh, how to good play, how to play good defense, uh, you know, kind of when you're in that transition zone and how to bail yourself out of, out of, out of deep water. Um, so, uh, you know, working on like defensive tactics and then also to introducing that block volley. So first day is all about soft and then day two, um, you know, day two, we, we kind of go about it. The, the MacGuffin way, uh, introduced to serve, introduced to drive, introduced the, uh, forehand speed up, uh, introduced, uh, all, all types of speed ups from, from the kitchen line, uh, talk about punch volley, roll volley, get into doubles tactics. Um, something I did not mention on day one, day one, the first hour of the uh, camp, we do uh, a little five minute raw video that, that video format is level specific. So, you know, lower levels, we do a more, a technique oriented kind of video format uh, that, that would obviously make sense for that level. Higher level, we'd kind of do a more tactician or a, uh, you know, pattern based or tactical based video format where uh, there's more patterns put in play. There's more live ball put in play. Um, obviously that, that, that makes sense with your level. 
Um, so, uh, so that's, that's kind of one of the little, uh, highlights for, for day one is that you get your five minute video, uh, that night over dinner, we do a little 20 to 30 minute Q and a, and then we do individual voiceovers. Uh, and then on day two, uh, you know, obviously day two is, is building weapons, but at the very end of day two, the last hour, I think this is kind of cool. And I don't believe any of their camp company does it. That's why you should totally go to TysonMcGuffin.com and sign yourself up for a camp today and sign yourself up for a great experience. But something that we do a little differently uh, because we're all about, uh, you know, getting those individual touches or, uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, get that customized individual aspect of taking a camp. Um, so, uh, so one of the things that we introduced that last hour is that we do a little 10 minute private. Um, so, um, anyhow, um, uh, so keep in mind, if you guys want to sign up for a camp, you can go to my website, TysonMcGuffin.com. Um, you can also take a look at my full tournament schedule for 2021. You take a look at all my sponsors. Um, you can take a look at some of the content I have on there. And most importantly, you can get yourself signed up for a Tyson McGuffin signature PB camp. Um, but, um, yeah, lots of, lots of fun stuff going on this year with camps partnered in with PPA partnered in with chicken and pickle. Um, um, and, uh, um, yeah, yeah. So I uh, got about 30, uh, two day camps rolling out this year. I'm leading 15 to 20 Kyle McKenzie's leading, uh, uh, around 10. And, um, anyhow, we are, we are more than excited. Okay. So, uh, topics. Of the week, uh, we're going to talk about Puna Gorda APP tournament results, and then um, and then we'll give you uh, or I will give you my instructional nugget. I don't have Kyle with me, sucker. Um, anyhow, so uh, tournament results, Puna Gorda, uh, uh, you know, ended up uh, taking two silvers and a gold. Should have been three golds. Damn it, uh, that's what I was hoping for. But uh, came up a little short in mix. Came up a little short in singles. Kudos to uh, Adam and Corinne, and kudos to Zane Navatil. Um, guys played some played some high level pickle. Um, even though I will never lose to Zane again, and Zane know that it's all coming from love, brother. It's just not going to happen again. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so you know, mixed. I wasn't supposed to play mixed. Um, it was kind of funny actually. I was sitting in Sue and Max hot tub on on that Friday morning getting ready to uh, be that bum who just watches, watches live stream on my phone all day. And, uh, uh, was just planning on kind of having a little family day and, and yeah. Uh, Anyhow, I ended up getting a text from Kyle, uh, Kyle, Mc, uh, sorry, Kyle Yates, uh, ended up telling me that, uh, he was sick. He was worried about, you know, uh, uh he, he, was, he was maybe worried about, uh, having COVID hadn't gotten tested yet. You know, obviously Lee, uh, uh, Lee, both Lee and Annalie sat out all of last year, didn't play any tournaments all because of COVID and um, because of Lee's, Lee's mom is obviously a little older and she lives with them. So just made sense for them to kind of stay out of, stay out of all tournament play. Anyhow, so with all those circumstances, with all, with all that kind of taking place, Kyle made the right move, uh, um, ended up uh, going to get a COVID test on that Friday told me to get my get my ass up and out of the hot tub and showered and to the uh, tournament venue. So anyhow, so I had the uh, pleasure of playing with Lee Waters. Uh, it actually kind of worked out pretty well because I'm playing with Lee and Anna Lee uh, pretty much all year. So, um, uh, but anyhow, it was Lee for, Lee's first tournament back. She played great all day. Uh, yeah, we ended up just coming short, but uh, overall, very good day. It was windy as hell. It was cold as could be. It was not typical Florida weather, um, you know, so it was just kind of one of those days where, uh, you know, the uh, uh, level of pickle obviously wasn't wasn't spectacular. Um, you know, days like that, I always just try to focus on. I always just try to focus on competing, making a lot of balls, you know, knowing that with the conditions, it's not it's not going to be pretty, um, you know. So if I just kind of bring my B game and 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 compete that that can usually uh, put me in a great position to be successful. Um, so I, I really try to play within myself, obviously when, when there's, when there's those conditions, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think Lee may, uh, you know, may have struggled a little bit with her tournament, first tournament coming back, may have struggled a little bit, uh, with the wind and stuff like that. But, uh, I thought overall, I think she was sharp, you know, I thought, uh, she did some things pretty well. Um, I know for herself, you know, she was super nervous. She was, uh, feeling a bunch of pressure. Um, uh, I don't know if there was any expectations or whatever, but all in all, um, uh, you know. 
I, it's always, it's always kind of tricky, you know, taking a year off, coming back, uh, you know, you, you feel like Lee should maybe be in a position where she doesn't feel pressure or her first turn of back. Uh, she'll go right back to where she was, but I'm not going to lie. You know, it's tough. You take time off and you kind of lose that rhythm or you lose that momentum or you lose that little slight edge. And, and, you know, it, it definitely takes a tournament or, or two to get it back. Uh, kudos to the, to Lee and Annalie, uh, after she, uh, took silver with me, she ended up cleaning up in uh, women. So maybe, maybe I was the problem. Uh, maybe it was all me. Uh, usually it's me. Um, but, uh, uh, anyhow, no, always love playing with Lee. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, Adam played well. Corinne played us uh, the best I've seen Corinne play. Um, must be all that, uh, must be all that stone loving. Um, but, uh, uh, um, yeah, no, she, she played well. She blocked well. She gave herself time. She was able to beat Lee head to head pretty consistently. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. She, she did some things pretty well. So that's, that's the best Corinne that I have seen. Kudos to them. Adam's my boy, Mr. Stone. And then I had to play stone again, the very next day in the men's final, uh, played with my boy, Andre Diescu. um, Andre played at University of Oklahoma uh, back in the day, played tennis there, played number one, big six foot six Romanian stud. Um, I don't think he'd been playing all that much. And uh, anyhow, I think he was a little rusty kind of going in, but, but we, uh, we definitely found it um, and kind of cruised all day um and ended up beating Navitel and, and, and Merchant in the uh, winner's bracket semi. Uh, and then winner's bracket final uh, ended up losing in three, ended up losing nine eleven 11 uh, to, to Stone and Deacon. Uh, had a couple of uh, controversy calls towards the end there in game three. Always kind of fun. Boys will be boys, but I, but I really got to keep my mouth shut. It's not worth it. Uh, uh, so sorry about that, Steve. But um, uh, yeah, so we ended up losing that one. Not going to lie, kind of had a crummy taste in my mouth after that. Uh, we ended up playing Jay and Pat in the bronze medal match, uh, beat up on those boys. Uh, kudos to Jay and Pat. Those guys ended up taking bronze. They had, they had a great day and, uh, very well could have beat us in that bronze medal match. We ended up, uh, winning in three. We were kind of sleeping that very first game and then got our act together in game two and game three. Uh, so, uh, kind of a funny story that probably none of the viewers know. And I'm pretty sure that the men's match got, got a decent amount of, uh, viewership, but, uh, anyhow, so Andre and I, Oh, or, you know, after we played the bronze medal match, it's like seven o'clock at night. It's freaking 55 degrees is blowing. It's cold as could be. I ended up like going in the car with, with Megan Banks, drank some coffee. Uh, and we're like, you know, we had like 15 minutes kind of getting geared up for our, for our final when we're trying to squeeze it in. Andre, I ended up calling Andre. Andre's in his car. He's in full body cramps and he's shaking. And I'm like, oh no, God, oh God, you know, Steve's, Steve's got a half broken ankle. Andre's, you know, Andre's cramping. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a freaking circus. Anyhow. So, um, uh, I told Andre to swallow it down and that, and that he'll be, he'll be just fine. Uh, and that, uh, that inner dog, if, if he lets that thing come out, you know, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll be, he'll be just fine. Anyhow. Um, yeah, Andre, I would say starting out, uh, was, was, uh, I think he had like five shirts on two pairs of sweats on. So starting out, he was, he was, uh, uh, pretty wrapped up like a, like a snowman in all these clothes. And, uh, I would say midway into, into game one, ended up taking off all of his clothes, uh, found himself. He didn't have a whole lot of gas left in the tank. So, um, not going to lie. I ended up, uh, uh, kind of taking over from that point. Uh, I did as much as I could to insert myself and take some pressure off of Andre. And, uh, I think I thought Andre did a, did a great job, uh, you know, just kind of being like a counterattacker. Uh, I uh, didn't have to really do a whole lot. I was making most of the drops. I was kind of doing, uh, you know, mo uh, most of the work in transition. And, um, and I would say that I, I was kind of getting us up. And then once we were up, you know, all, all Andre had to do <clears throat> was just beat anybody head to head once they, once they came at him and I thought Andre did a very good job of, uh, you know, getting his counters down, uh, beating Steve head to head, beating Adam head to head. And, um, um, I can't say enough about Andre. The guy's freaking full of heart. And that's why I played with him. I ended up, uh, uh only playing with Andre one other time. 
And that was two years ago at the Triple Crown Tournament. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with that tournament, I don't believe it's going on anymore, but it was a fun tournament that Jason Munoz ran. Uh, I was in Simi Valley, California. It was three days of men's doubles. Anyhow, on that particular day, we ended up taking bronze. And, uh, um, and you know, Riley Newman is pretty competitive. I would say that Andre is probably right up there with him. Um, but as far as, like, guttiness and, like, true heart, um, uh, I, I mean, Riley is up there. But I, but I would say Andre maybe, maybe is, like, a notch above uh, Riley in the sense of just, like, being mentally tough showing grit and uh uh being able to swallow down you know all all the cramps and all that and just kind of find find a way to do it um so um you know and it's it's always fun playing with a guy like that because like you want to win for him you got a lot of respect for him um so i would i would freaking take heart and grit over talent any day if you know what i mean um i i i appreciate the boys i i uh, i appreciate the people who uh put in the time uh, uh, like to suffer and, um, you know, like to just go about, uh, go about, uh, their, their training or their on-court performance kind of in that manner. But, uh, uh, anyhow, so yeah, we ended up, uh, beating them 12, 10, 12, 10, uh, gain of 15. Andre still kind of cramping. Uh, I ended up playing the left. Uh, I think we're down three eleven, And as we're down three eleven, I, uh, I essentially kind of took over, I would say 60 to you know 70% of the court and tried to do as much as I could to really insert myself and, uh, you know, put some visual pressure on Steve and Adam kind of through that. I started serving a bit more aggressively. I started driving a bit more aggressively. Andre was able to poach a little bit off of my drive and kind of get us some free points, kind of get us rolling. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's funny too. Like when you're down three eleven, or like you're, you're down, uh, uh, you know, uh, to that, or I guess if you're, if you're down, uh, in that sort of deficit, you know, you're, you're down, you know, six to 10 points or whatever. Um, you know, when you can find some freebies to go to, or, or when you can, like, when you have some weapons, you can serve aggressively, you can start banging the forehand, get some free points. I'm not going to lie. It's very difficult to come back in games of 15, or it's very difficult to come back in matches when you don't have that, like wreak havoc, drive and crash kind of mentality. Uh, when you're only counterattackers and you can only play soft and just grind points out, it's tough to, to, to rack up three or four, you know, points in a row or to gain momentum when you're, uh, you know, when you're kind of fighting uphill. Um, so, uh, so I would say, you know, to help us close the gap that obviously played a big part driving, closing, uh, kind of getting some free points from there. And then, uh, uh, not going to lie. I, I found my best level at, uh, I don't know. It was like 10, 13. I ended up, uh, uh, the, in, in that particular moment, we're down 10, 13. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The ball started to get a little bigger for me. The court started to get a little bigger. And, uh, it was just kind of one of those moments where I was able to lock in and told myself, Hey, I'm going to be the guy I'm going to take over. Um, uh, I, I know I can beat Adam head to head. I know I can beat Steve head to head. Uh, so, uh, kind of like a, you know, kind of like a Michael Jordan quote or like a Michael Jordan eagerness. I, I was, I, I wanted the ball, right. You know, I was, I was all about, I was all about taking the third, getting ourselves up, uh, taking forehands in the middle, taking dinks in the middle, all in all, I just felt like it was, it was my turn to kind of take over. And, uh, uh I, I think, yeah, with that willingness, with that eagerness, um, it allowed me to start dinking more aggressively, it allowed me to start really getting more involved. And then from that, yeah, I was able to kind of ride that, uh, build some confidence through that. And we ended up winning 15, 13. So pretty cool. Woo. Love that. Love that. Love that. Um, never say never, never say never. You can never count yourself out in this game. I'll tell you what, um, this game is, this, uh, this game's a battle of matchups and it's a roller coaster of momentum. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, so yeah, so men's uh, good day. Uh, uh, next tournament I have coming up is World Pickleball Championships. I'm also playing with Andre, um, so super super happy about that. Um, uh, and um, yeah, uh, Andre is going to get tuned up and ready. And and uh, I would I would put us back in that back in that final. I'm, I'm hoping that we uh, play. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's Ben and Colin or Ben and Matt, but uh, but I am putting us back in that finals match. 
and uh, should be a good weekend. So make sure you guys tune in to World Pickleball Championships. Uh, that's February like 4th through the 8th. It's like a four-day event. We have a team event. It's Team USA versus Team World. And then I believe it's three days, or sorry, it's four days after that. Thursday singles, uh, uh, Fridays uh, uh, gender doubles mixed, Saturdays some sort of doubles, and then Sunday is all the finals. So that Wednesday is the team event, uh, uh, singles doubles doubles, and then that last day, um, that last day essentially we just we just play all the finals. So make sure you guys tune into that. Um, let's see here. So singles, singles. I'm gonna throw some love out there to Ryan Cherry. Uh, he, he put on a 45 minute highlight reel. Um, I am not going to throw any excuses out there, but one excuse, I, uh, didn't hear my freaking name called and, uh, ended up showing up to the court. Uh, typical deal. Didn't get a warm up. Next thing I know, Sherry is rolling me side to side. I'm down seven zero and, uh, kudos to him. He played well. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, Kyle McKenzie told me this. I've lost to one paddle, Zane Navatil, Ryan Cherry, and Ben Johns. I've lost to one paddle, Franklin family. <clears throat> I've lost to one paddle in singles, and that is that stinking, gritty, poppy, good-looking Franklin paddle that uh, that Mr. Johns created. Um, but uh, I know. I can't, can't believe that. Anyhow, I ended up losing to Sherry. Uh, Lewis lost to Sherry in three. I don't, I don't know how many stinking guys were in the draw, but I believe I ended up playing eight or nine matches. Lost to Sherry in the winner's bracket quarters. Uh, after I lost that, I'm like, okay, okay. So I, I'm, uh, I will, I will die before I lose again on these courts today. And, uh, and ended up, you know, uh, battling all the way through, beat everybody in the back draw. Uh, beat, beat Frank in the bronze medal match, played Zane in the finals, beat Zane two and seven, uh, rolling in that gain of 15, thinking, hey, you know, I, I, I just beat Zane two and seven. This is this is a cakewalk. Uh, Zane picked it up, started going for broke on the serve, started really banging the serve. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure I whiffed uh, one, definitely one, maybe even two returns. Comes to show how lively his serve was. But uh, kudos to Zane. He played well. I mean, not only did he serve big, but he followed it up with a with a third ball drive or a third ball drop and was able to kind of move me around from that. Uh, so uh, kudos to him. The guy's a stud. Uh, little little wiry sucker. But um, um, okay, so let's go. Let's uh, let's talk about the uh, teaching nugget. Teaching nugget of the week. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to use Zane's serve as an example. Or I'm going to use my serve as an example. Uh, you know, if you can, <clears throat> uh, if you can dictate off the serve, it can enhance your third ball. Or I always tell people, uh, uh if you can do more in one category, it's going to enhance something. Uh, for example, uh, you know, if you, you can drive your third ball to, to force your, force your opponents to volley short, which will enhance your fifth. So essentially, you know, think about this, uh, you know, if you're, if you're pretty consistent with your serve and, and you feel like, you know, uh, you could, you could do more with it. You could place it a bit better. You could add more pace. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with, uh, uh, you know, looking to dictate a bit more on the serve, looking to get some more easy power, uh, trying to really push the returner back, trying to get them on their heels, uh, over time that can, that can cause some, some inconsistency with the returner's return that can cause some pressure uh, uh, with the returner's return where they could end up leaving it short. All in all, you can enhance your third or you can look to dictate more with your third if you go for more on the serve. Obviously, this plays a much bigger role in singles, but I mean, doubles too. I mean, I see Ben's being aggressive on the serve, Dackel's being aggressive on the serve, Zane Navatil's being aggressive on the serve. I think, I think all these guys got it from me, but you know. Um, uh, anyhow, so it just, it just kind of seems like, uh, you know, to take a look at Simone, take a look at Catherine, uh, uh, we're, we're starting to starting to try to find a little gain out of the serve to enhance or to get some sort of benefit or some sort of advantage, uh, with their third. So, um, uh, you know, let's say that, uh, let's say like, let's say the return is getting on you quick. And the returner is just putting all this pressure on you because they're they're teeing off on returns. It's super deep. It's pushing your back. You've got to ask yourself, hey, am I am I doing enough on my serve 
that maybe gives me more time on my third or my, and you know, if, uh, 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 are they, uh, is the returner liking my spin on the serve and they're counteracting. And so with them counteracting the spin, they're able to get more depth or they're able to be more consistent because they're using my spin. Um, you know, for, for example, when somebody hits a top spin serve at me, I, I tend to slice back when somebody hits a slice return at me, I tend to roll back so I can, so I can use that spin flirt with it and play with it. Um, but, um, so yeah, I, I think, I think there's a benefit in just getting some free points, getting the monkey off your back, uh, you know, learning to kind of dictate with the serve, which, which can open up other areas. Um, uh, you know, something I do even more aggressively is anytime that I see my opponents are stacking or, uh, this is more so on the female side. Let's say the female has a hard time coming in or not a hard time coming in, but she's just slower to coming in. Then I'm, I'm thinking, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do some more damage on the serve. I'm going to push him back a bit more. Uh, and then with that, obviously, um, you know, I can, I can look to drive and use the forehand live and die by the forehand. Okay. For all content pertaining to pickleball on my MacGuffin pickleball club, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications uh, for, for all the hot, fresh content coming in to my new YouTube channel. Um, be real. Be a good person. Work hard. At the end of the day, it is just a silly plastic ball that you are batting around. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is The McGuffin Show. I will see you guys next week.